10 ways to boost your personality for living a prosperous and happy life. Personality comprises understanding self, fixing one's goal, physical and mental health, good physical and mental health and various other facets of the person as seen by himself or herself and also as seen by others. Indeed, understanding personality is not easy, but it is extremely important. It is important for your success. More importantly, it helps you to achieve happiness. First, understanding yourself. Our first step should be that we sit down, contemplate about life's significance in, be, in case we haven't done so earlier. It is kind of vision statement. It is kind of your mission which you must clarify to yourself what actually you want to do. The act of com contemplation on significance of your life will always help you to adopt and maintain a proper perspective. Point number two, specify your goals. Everyone has some wishes, some things which they want to achieve, but they, these are only wishes. By and large, they are not set goals unless unless and until they are specific desires. Wishes become desire only when you specify your goals. Wishes do not allow you to focus or take action needed for achievement. These wishes oftentimes remain wishes. Further, unrealized wishes erode self-esteem. It is imperative therefore to write down clearly each of your goals in respect of various aspects of life. Goals would state the time frame also. These should also clarify your clear plan, how you, you are going to achieve it. It's only when you make a practical plan that you can pursue your goals effectively. Point number three, physical and mental health. First on the list of your goals should be your good health. One can achieve physical good health by taking care of food, exercise and sleep. Human body is made to last for about 100 years. So we need to use all the faculties with discretion. We must not overuse, we not, must not underuse, but we should never abuse strike a good balance and keep on becoming more effective. Mental health is even more important than physical health. It refers to your thoughts, your behavior, your attitude towards others. It also refers to your attitude towards life. Point number four always apply your mind application of mind application of mind enables you to analyze any situation it enables to review your performance even in challenges in fact human sufferings impart great life's lessons one should be willing to learn these lessons knowledge acquired through reading books attending training programs and interacting with others play a very important role. One should never be judgmental. One should have an open mind. However, it is necessary to apply your mind and to form opinions about anything that concerns you. This process helps you to become more decisive and helps you to pursue your goals. Number five, courage and kindness. Courage and kindness, they go together. I remember a story of a movie 
Cinderella. It's a movie made about 60 years ago. Yet I find it is fresh and captivating. An oft-repeated children fairy tale enthralls everyone. The little children as well as the senior citizens, it helps everyone to visualize that life is really good. It's worth living. Cinderella's inherent kindness with courage to withstand adversity brought for her fortunes. Kindness indeed is a virtue which, however small in action, never goes waste. It enhances self-esteem, but more importantly, kindness brings happiness. In our morning walkers club, often the subject of how to improve the morals in the society is discussed. Though India is known for its tolerance and kindness, yet today it is felt that citizens show scant respect for others. Everyone complains about the conduct of our people around. Undoubtedly, with the uncanny behavior, no one has anything to gain but a lot to lose. Courage is an important aspect of personality which helps you to have a positive attitude. Someone wrote, Life shrinks or expands in proportion to one's courage. How true! A person who lacks courage can hardly live life. They just exist like other living beings. Life comprises a series of events. Some are to our liking, others are not so good as we are concerned and certain others very disturbing. The Bhagavad Gita teaches us that all such events, good or bad, have to be borne have to be faced by each individual with a calm mind. If you have courage, you may face these without fear. But if you lack courage, there could be some horrifying experiences, even though the events may remain the same. One may belong to any religion. They usually pray before any dire encounter. Prayer has certain power. In fact, courage is not the absence of fear. Human beings, when faced with unexpected, untoward situations, are bound to face fear. But when you decide to embark upon a challenging situation, you are finally aware of the dangers involved. You may be struck with fear, but you still go ahead. It, is, it only means that you have conquered the fear. Courage is not absence of fear. Courage is nothing but conquering the fear. Great success can be achieved by someone who adds perseverance to courage and kindness. When you do that, even the most difficult tasks can be completed <coughs> with ease. In fact, lives of great men clearly illustrate that they had courage. They were always kind and they all persevered. Point number six is good communications are critical, more critical today than ever. We all communicate verbally right from morning till the time we are able to speak before we sleep. In fact, babies start communicating immediately after birth. As we grow, social considerations keep on shaping our communication skills. Besides, the influence of people around, parents, teachers, friends and others, we may also create an impact with their interaction. We can develop and maintain good communication skills only with regular review of our ability regarding these skills regarding these communication skills. Point number seven, effective speaking. Yes, I have talked about communication skills, but effective speaking is a little more than that. First of all, it's necessary to have 
good content content is the king as they say and it is true effective communications take into account more than any other aspect of life content means domain knowledge you can't feel fool people with shallow thoughts much less you can impress them much less you can influence them lot of hard work goes into acquiring knowledge the biggest problem is when you have were anything worthwhile worthwhile knowledge but you can't use into your advantage due to lack of effective speech that's rather unfortunate your expression remains impaired people would barely know that you are a storehouse of useful information then what should we do become a good speaker practice the art of and science of speaking clearly confidently and convincingly how do you speak clearly you must understand the speech is the result of a decision to communicate first thinking clarifies the idea that you want to project to your listener or a group of listeners then the brain sends a signal to the lungs and some breath is released breath strikes the vocal cord to produce sound but the words are created by the speech organs so in order to speak clearly think clearly cultivate habit of deep breathing it enables you to have sufficient breath to support strength of your voice this will also enable you to speak a longer sentence without breathing in between the flow of speech will enable ideas to flow smoothly point number 8 is active listening active listening is also very important communication does not only mean effective speaking in fact that is the beginning point but even more important is the active listening active listening will bring you the results that you are looking for you communicate with someone or a group of listeners with the obje- with an objective you should be clear about the objective but how you can influence others you can do so by listening to them actively and with your good speech you can influence them how do you find whether you are a good listener or not i give a checklist which is self explanatory here there are some points a don't think what you are going to say next when another person is speaking just focus on understanding and assimilating what he or she has to say you must listen with an open mind don't try to relate with your own experience similar experience when somebody is relating a story support his argument your tendency to evaluate should be given a pause never be judgmental as they say next point is you are when you are listening try to recreate mentally what the other person is saying objectively objectively don't put your subjectivity into it point number 4 here which i call d so that we are not confused try to see things from others point of view empathize and be compassionate while listening e try to uncover the intent of the speaker all speakers may not be terse their verbosity may require a little extra effort on your part to understand the real intent make that extra effort it's worth it last but then think what results you can produce through your listening rather than speaking if you want to influence people you will be amazed to observe how listening comes in handy and help helpful listen a minute longer than it is comfortable that extra minute that extra mile will give you extra input in case you are having a dialogue for understanding the other's point of view then it's all the more important 
that you listen carefully last but not the least you must remember that words of your advice will be seen as unwanted noise never given advice unless you are asked for it if you are not convinced and the solution demands that you must express your views do that and say we agree to disagree point number 5 9 poise the dictionary meaning of poise is composure or self possession or equilibrium thus poise person person who is having a poise is self assured and carries with himself or herself gracefully and with dignity his personality for human beings the difficulty arises due to our emotions if anything is not happening as per our expectation the individual is likely to react in a way which is often irrational it is difficult to maintain poise but with continuous practice you can assuredly achieve however the benefits are immense a poised person is able to deal with all kinds of people calmly and elegantly how to maintain poise psychologists after research have come to a certain conclusion in fact various conclusions which i would like to reproduce a few important ones the biggest enemy of poise is anger everyone should agree that anger is not beneficial to any individual under any circumstances a person gets angry due to uncomfortable situation due to uncomfortable people due to his or her uh, or her own inadequacy to meet the situation one may also get an angry if someone insults or speak in a manner which is unworthy but with practice one can meet all challenges they can remain cool in all circumstances but this will happen with consistent efforts and self awareness uh, that does not mean you should take anything lying down you should be assertive but that's a matter of another discussion Assert assertiveness is very important which we will discuss sometime later further you should laugh with others even if a joke is on you any sarcastic remarks can easily be laughed away apply your mind to come out of it with a solution this will happen if you take things in their stride life is a mixture of highs and lows good things are often followed by challenges just like night falls after the day and the day comes after the night life does not offer a regular cycle like night and day but both the difficulties and happy moments are a part of everybody's life we need to be appreciated keep your spirits up when things go wrong ego is another enemy of poise unfortunately this malady is widespread it is found that most well to do people successful people they suffer from this malady realizing that their ego does not serve any purpose they should they should not they should not be egoist but they should th throw it away from their lives if they want to be happy and successful ego is always a hindrance in your success point number 10 happiness in the dictionary there is no proper definition of happiness one has to find his own definition which works for him or her in simple words it's a constant and continuous feeling of joy and contentment it should not be momentary pleasures are momentary what a person does they ultimately do to find out happiness it is not a destination but it can be found in the journey of life it is one's choice to be happy whether one is having everything or not it is completely his choice 
to make himself happy with what he has it is not a position to be prized but it is the quality of thoughts and state of mind it is a sort of action when one is wise he makes others happy some of the authors and some other wise people say that today the biggest problem in the world is that we are more interested in making others believe that we are happy than trying to be happy <coughs> meaning thereby we spend more resources on showing off than utilizing those resources to make ourselves really content full of contentment full of joy and significance of life it is just a belief that money and success can buy happiness but on the other hand these are deficient they are not by themselves they cannot do anything your decision to be happy plays the top role money success your decisions are just few of the constituents i don't say money is not important money is also important now these are to be placed in proper per perspective in proper position happiness can't be bought but happiness can be created it can be felt it can be expressed or it can be experienced if it could have been bought all would have paid the price for it the best method to create happiness is to do things which you love it contributes a lot if it is not possible then love the things which you have things which you are doing and make it your choice your first choice to be happy thanks for watching Mm-hmm. <laughs>